Welcome, this is Michelle with Paper Stamp Inc. And today I'm going to share with you how to use cover plate dies, or some people call them background dies, to create simply stunning cards. You don't need a lot of work to make these cards look beautiful, so we're going to go for a very simple design, but I will show you another more stepped up design as we go through the cards at the end. So make sure you stay tuned till the very end. I want to take this opportunity, if you haven't already done so, to invite you to become part of my crafting family by hitting that red subscribe button down below. Make sure that you ring the bell so you get notifications of future video projects as well. So today we are going to be using this under the sea um, die that is from Cat Scrappiness. And I just love her die. She's got some gorgeous designs. And look at all the detail in this one. And her dies are very affordable too. So I will make sure that I link below all of the supplies that I use, including this die, so that you can get those if you're interested in recreating some of these cards. So we're going to um, do one of these together, but then I do have four examples for you at the end of some other cards I created using this same die. Now this one, I went and I ran it through my Big Kick machine, and I used an embossing um, mat. And I will link that below as well. You'll have to look at the sandwich for your particular machine. But what you do is you put the embossing mat under the paper and um, put the die on top, and then you get a softer effect. So it doesn't cut through instead of bosses. So you get an extra use out of your die plates. You can actually emboss with them. And you can do this with a multitude of designs. But I find it works really great for these cover plate dies. So you get a whole background off of them. So we could use the embossed or debossed, but I'm going to use the embossed side. And I'm going to bring in a piece of scratch paper, just some copy paper, because I'm going to be doing some ink blending on these using my Distress Oxide inks. I just love these for the smoothness of blending. And I pick three colors out here, out of here, and we're going to just do a little fun blending together. Don't be afraid to um, just kind of get your your dies are your inks and just have fun with them. So I'm using Twisted Citron for the first one. And you do want to make sure you don't go too heavy handed when you're doing this because you don't want to get all of that ink squished down on the background. We want to just try and cover more of the raised portions of this embossing plate. So our embossing uh, emboss paper. And then I'm going to bring in Mermaid Lagoon. So I think that's a very appropriate color for an under the sea card and I'm going to just put that on and this one does come on very bright and deep and I just it's a very um a very rich color so this is one of my favorite blues to reach for and then um I'm just showing you the mermaid lagoon and then I'm going to bring in my uh, twisted berry I believe is what this one is um I will uh, make sure that I put the link down below on that color so I'm just going to Go over that a little bit into the blue to get another color. So this is more of a, a bright pinkish purple. So I'm going to getting a little bit of that bluish purple. And then I'm going to come back in with my Mermaid Lagoon and go over some of that Twisted Citron to get a more of a blue green. So I'm going to end up with really five colors by the time I've done some blending on here. And you can do as many or as few as you want. You could just do one color if you really like it. And you'll see I did get a little heavy on the right hand side there. Um, so try and, and keep it a little bit lighter um, when you're doing these, unless you like that look. So I always cut these a little bit larger than what I'm going to want to end up with, because that way I can trim off some of those sides. You do get a little bit of a ridge that you can see there when you run your plates through. So I want to cut that off and I'm going to just cut this down by a quarter inch. So in the end, I'm going to end up with a panel that is three and three quarter inches by um, five and yeah, by five inches, three and three quarter by five. And then I'm going to put my matting layer, which is going to be my standard four by five and a quarter. And so I like to trim a little bit off one end and then go to the other side to get my true measurements. I'm not so much worried on that first cut that I'm doing because I just want to make sure I'm not taking too much off so I don't get too short in the end, but I'm just cutting a tiny little bit off and then I'm going to true it up when I do the second cut. 
So we're gonna bring in that black matte and I just love the way the bright colors pop off of that black background. Um, I could definitely have picked up one of the colors in the scheme as well to use as my matting layer, but I find a classic black always works. Keep those neutrals on hand. I like to keep them cut down in my, I've got a drawer where I keep some of these panels already pre-cut to make for quick and easy crafting. So I have my black panels that are standard at four by five and a quarter, as well as I keep some of my other neutrals, like navy is great. I have a couple of grays that I love, as well as some browns. So that way I'm always ready to just grab and go. And I do the same thing with my white panels as well. So I decided to mount this up with some foam tape. And I love this stuff because you just get so much of it and, um, on these rolls and it goes a long way. And it just uh, adds another little something extra to my cards. So I'll put a link to that below. I get asked quite a bit about this foam tape. And um, this is left over from my uh, an order from quite a while ago. So my new stuff is a little bit different. You'll notice the looking at the picture, if you go there, that it's a slightly different um, backing on it, but it is uh, the same type of foam tape. So I'm just trying to use up what I have first before I crack into that new stuff. <laughs> so I put three strips on there and some people like to put more than that on there. Um, it's totally up to you. I find if I'm using a good quality, that three is plenty and I'm not worrying about my panel sagging in the middle. If you are using a lightweight cardstock, you probably want to add a little bit more behind there just to keep from your panel, your panel from sagging down into the middle. And I'm using these little droplets that I think are great. They're um, also from Cat Scrappiness and they come in a variety of sizes in the same pack. So I really like that because I like to use, um, not only mix and match sometimes my embellishments, but mix and match the sizes. I think that that adds for more interest as well. So I'm using glue dots and my take your pick tool to put these on there. And then I realized I didn't have my sentiment on yet. So I had some pre, um, once I have pre-done with a variety of colors and using white and black um, embossing powders and embossing those on there. So I decided to go with this bluish green one um, just to bring in a little bit more of a lighter touch than on this one. Um, I do tend to go to purple a lot, but I try and break that trend occasionally and put that on there. So I did need to that off and put a little bit more glue on there. I usually go very light on my glue um, and you don't need a lot of this liquid glue, but when you have this embossed background, um, you aren't getting as much contact with the paper uh, that your sentiment strips on. So you do need to be a little bit more heavy handed with the glue. Just be careful you're not too heavy handed and it's squishing out the back there. So I'm just gonna pull in a few more of these droplets and add those on to the background and I just thought these were perfect they look like little water bubbles kind of coming up to go with our under the sea theme I hope you guys are getting out and enjoying the summer I'm in Montana if you didn't know that and um, I just have been loving this beautiful weather we've had this last week we had a lot of rain and actually cool weather earlier in June down into the highs for the 60s and uh, ready for summer to come back. So I was able to get out this weekend and do some camping and um, go to a beautiful waterfall hike and I have just nothing, nothing more uh, wonderful I think than getting out in nature unless it's sitting in my craft room, right? So I didn't have a big <laughs> or little glue dots handy so it would be much easier if you have your mini glue dots around. Make life easier on yourself. I made it a little harder for myself by trying to get these bigger ones to work and eventually did cut one down. But sometimes I, I don't craft smarter, I craft harder. So get the little, little mini glue dots. <laughs> Take time to find those. But you can cut your bigger ones down too, if you need to. We'll put one more of these on here if I can get that little sucker up with uh, not having any fingernails. It gets a little more challenging for me sometimes. That's why I do like the take your pick tool. I can kind of 
use that to get under things and place these little tiny objects there. And that's our last one. I did do the graduating from the larger ones to the smaller ones as I went up to the top. And let's bring in those other cards that I did and show you the other ones I created using the same cover die. And let me know down below which one is your favorite of these dies. So this one, I had a lot of fun. I used flocking material. And I don't know if you've ever used it. This was my first time using it. And I wish you could feel this. It is so soft. I love it for this design. This just gives it this really uh, soft feel, but I think it would be great for baby cards as well. You just think of anything that you want to really just a uh, tactile touch to. And you will find that when you're blending on this, so I took a, the white flocking and I did do some ink blending on top of it. You will get some of that flocking flaking off. You'll, you'll get little fuzzies everywhere, but you do end up with enough leftover that you're still going to get that texture. So don't worry if it starts getting fuzzies everywhere. You're still going to be good. And I used uh, that same little hello sentiment on there. This is using some glimmer paper that is from the new Stampin' Up! catalog, and it's got this graduated colors going from the pinks to the yellows. Um, there's another sheet that I'll show you in a little bit that I used as well with different colors, so they come in the same package, but there's a lot of shine. I wish you could tell that on the camera. It doesn't quite pick up all that glimmer, but these bold colors are just beautiful, and I use some more of those little dots of water droplets to go up. So this one, I did my ink blending on my background piece, and then I cut out a black mat to go over the top. So you can use your uh, ink blending on and your shimmer paper or specialty papers to do the die cut or do something interesting in the background and put a plain die cut over the top. But you can, I think the detail really pops with the black on there. This one, I use the other colors in that shimmer paper. And this one is actually a shaker card. So I pop the panel up. I put some acetate behind it, popped it up and with some of that foam tape and then put some of the sequins down below on there. And those sequins are also from Cat Scrappiness and they are the clear pinwheel. Let me see, I think I've got those somewhere. Um, the clear pinwheel and a grape. I will put the exact names down there below for you, but I thought those colors picked up perfectly. And I love the clear pen wheels because it's got not just clear, but it's got a little bit of design in it too. So it adds a little bit more interest. I hope that you enjoyed these cards. Again, let me know what's your favorite. And until we meet again, make sure you grab your paper stamp and ink and do something creative.